All right, guys, welcome back to the boat restoration series. Thanks for joining me on episode nine, where I document the process of restoring a 1940 40 foot mahogany and oak constructed seaplane tender, which is built for the Royal Air Force during World War II and used as a rescue vessel. My aim is to convert this boat into an off grid sustainable home. Some areas of the wheelhouse roof needed attention. I did some patchwork, I applied Sikaflex to where there were small cracks in the roof blanket. Using the small wood scraper, I planed down the boat's mastic edge on the roof. I started back painting at the bilge on the starboard side below the sliding door with aluminium based wood primer and as you guys have seen me use this stuff time and time again it's really great paint for treating or just finishing any exposed timber. While I tidied up the interior and made some more space my father got to work in building a new engine room cover. Sanding down the roof planking between coats of Bondex, I'm wiping down the surface with white spirits to remove any residual dust and to get the surface as clean as possible. After we assessed the starboard stern, we began to tear out any rotten diagonal mahogany. The rainwater seemed to have been running down the lifting eye and added to the already rotten timbers. As you can see in this photo of the lifting eye, the tonnage capacity and the year of construction. The support sits down flush with the vertical oak uprights and allows for the diagonal mahogany to embed with the recess. The deck planking then will sit down on top of this. I found this plywood capping piece had been breached and water had gotten behind it. I removed the rotten saturated wood, left it to dry and then applied wood hardener. After that, I made up some wooden inlays, put them in place and then used wood hardener to bring it back up to the surface. After applying about 7 coats of Bondex to the roof planking, we followed up with exterior yacht varnish and of course sanded between coats. Here I'm painting and sanding the wooden overhang timbers for the port side sliding door.
this edge of the roof at a section of rot. So I just spliced in a piece of timber, put in some mastic behind it, then any recesses I filled with car fillers afterwards, and then just sanded it flush. Amazingly, these sliding doors were made by Peter, the master craftsman, my uncle. You might have seen him in older episodes. And uh, these were made over 24 years ago, which is it's just incredible. We moved the boat around to the jetty so it's more accessible for repair work on the stern and the hull. Believe it or not, being in Ireland we had to wait for enough rain so the water level would rise and then all we had to do was lift the out drives up and we had enough clearance. For the time being, in order to get the boat sealed up, we just cut plywood and put it in place for where the windows will go, in the wheelhouse. I removed the excess mastic from around the windows, sanded down the entire cabin exteriors, and then any cosmetic wear I just filled with car fillers. more rot, but this time on the port side of the wheelhouse cabin, I decided it was much better to just cut this rod out entirely than to splice in a piece. I cut back any rot to get the fresh timber, then cut a section of pine to fit in place, and then replaced the top plank using a regular pine plank. 
Of course, we treated the timber. We absolutely flood coated it with antifreeze. Believe it or not, yes, antifreeze. People swear by this stuff. Carpenters swear by this stuff. It's way better than your wood hardener because the wood hardener is just so overpriced. But the 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 antifreeze actually gets right down through all the pores. It's much better, and we'll definitely be using it in the future. Then I just painted it to match, in keeping with the rest of the roof blanking. So the starboard and port deck is leaking, yes it's so disheartening, but I'm just taking it step by step and it's just called for making bigger supports. It won't stop the deck from flexing, but it'll minimize it. So as I'm recording this voiceover in the boat, I just finished up securing the last of the deck supports. I will have to do one or two more where the older supports were broken and people like cut them out to perform my parents to put in presses and different things really crazy. You just make the press to fit the supports rather than cut the supports. It, it's a bit of a crazy idea that I went. So then I'll move up to the mid cabin and after that then to the Vibra. The sickle flex between the teak deck planking needed to be sanded down flush. I hit that with the belt sander, new coat of fresh exterior paint on there, and then car fillers between the countersunk screw holes. In the next episode, we'll tackle the starboard stern, continue with the deck maintenance, and move up on towards the bow. Alright guys, thank you so much for your continued support on these episodes, it's been far too long since I got back to it, as you may know I've been busy producing a feature length documentary, please leave a like and subscribe to stay up to date with the next episode, and feel free to share this video with your friends or your family who might also be interested. Thank you so much guys, till the next video. Mm -hmm.